In this video, I want to go through a CFA level one exam style question on the topic of systematic versus unsystematic risk. These are topics related to the capital asset pricing model. And in fact, it's very difficult to understand the CAPM without a good appreciation and understanding of what the difference between these two types of risk is. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, I suggest you keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question which I want us to have a go at. Which of the following statements about risk is least likely correct? A. Total risk equals systematic risk and market risk. B. Political uncertainty, economic cycles and inflation give rise to systematic risk. And C. Firm-specific risk may be reduced through diversification. Okay, as you can see, this is a purely theoretical question, so no numbers involved in this one. Nevertheless, even though it sounds easy, well, it is easy marks, but you need to understand what the two different types of risk mean and what are the alternative names for them, etc., etc. So I'm going to write this out for you so that you have a full appreciation of what's going on. Right, let me write down the phrase total risk. Now, Total risk is going to be represented by uh, sigma. And I'm going to say sigma p um, because this is the sigma of the portfolio. And you may recall or you should recall that sigma in uh, finance or more generally in uh, financial mathematics or statistics is going to represent standard deviation. So a measure of volatility. Now, total risk under the tenants of the capital asset pricing model. So overall volatility of a financial security is going to be com composed of two um, items, systematic risk, as in the um, subtitle, and the second component of the uh, title is unsystematic risk. So yes, that is the second element which I'm going to add, unsystematic risk. And whereas sort of classic portfolio theory focuses purely on total risk. Um, the capital asset pricing model breaks total risk down into these two components and starts treating them differently from the point of view of which of these risks is diversifiable, which should be managed, etc., etc. So systematic risk is the risk which cannot be diversified away. Let me write this down. Which cannot be diversified away. You can't get rid of it. So another name for it is going to be non-diversifiable way, uh, diversifiable risk, or alternatively, market risk. Now, what do we mean by this? All companies which are present operate in a specific economy are exposed to certain market factors. The overall economic conditions, GDP growth or decline in GDP, inflation, interest rate environment, political situation of a given country of, or a given market. That is something you can't get rid of, generally speaking, if you're investing in the universe of companies, in the universe of stocks, securities, um, of companies belonging to a certain economy. However hard you may try, you're not going to escape certain common factors. And that's what we mean by systematic risk. On the other hand, I've got unsystematic risk. Now, this is the very opposite of um, systematic, and this is going to be diversifiable risk implying we can get rid of this one, right? And it's going to be obviously risk which can be diversified away. We also call this firm specific risk because it's nothing to do with overall market factors or economic factors. It's to do with firm specific factors. Um, okay, another name which I've written down in my notes, and I'm going to write down over here is unique risk, just in case you see this being written down in your um, in your sort of in your exam under this this name potentially. So let me just go back to the question for a moment. Right, which of the following statements about risks risk is least likely correct? We're looking for the wrong one. And look, A says total risk. So we've got total risk over here equals systematic risk 
and market risk. Well, this one is clearly, so this first one, it's clearly wrong, isn't it? Because systematic risk and market risk literally mean the same thing. And because we've identified the wrong one, that gives us an answer to the question. It's going to be answer A. So question solved, very easy, once you know the different names for systematic risk, for example. But look, what about B? Political risk, uh, sorry, political uncertainty, economic cycles and inflation give rise to systematic risk. And that is absolutely correct. That's true, this, um, this statement uh, B, because as I said, systematic risk comes from generic overall economic factors which are experienced in a certain market or economy, and those are prime examples of such factors. Whereas C, firm-specific risk, okay, so this is another way of saying unsystematic risk, may be reduced through diversification. Yes, because it is a diversifiable um, risk element. And let me, you know, we, we've kind of solved the question. We know the answer is a brilliant points scored for the exam. But let me um, take this one step further and I want to draw a, a little diagram which I think will be useful from the point of view of then understanding how the capital asset pricing model works. So I've got my, um, I've got my axes and on one um, hand I'm going to have the portfolio total risk. So that's going to be, well, that was supposed to be a sigma. So sigma P, that's the total risk of the portfolio, meaning the total volatility of it. And on the um, horizontal axis, I'm going to have the number of uh, stocks. We're going to focus on uh, shares, basically building a portfolio of shares. Um, stocks in the portfolio. So how big our portfolio is in terms of the number of holdings that we've got in there. Now, as the number of stocks in our portfolio increases, what's going to happen is the total risk associated with it is going to decline. So let me maybe draw this like so. Our total risk fades away or becomes lower and lower as we increase the number of holdings. However, there is a limit to the reduction that we can achieve. And that limit under the capital asset pricing model or its underlying um, assumptions is the level of systematic risk in the market or arising systematic risk arising from exposure to market factors. This is something you can't diversify away, something you can't get rid of. No matter how much you, you attempt to diversify, you are not going to get rid of this component. However, you will be able to reduce the impact on your portfolio of unsystematic risk or firm-specific risk. And please take this chart and commit it to memory because it's something that's going to help you quite a lot. Now, going on from this, an important um, conclusion should arise. It's quite possible through diversification for increasing the number of stocks to get rid of unsystematic risk. All it takes is building a bigger or more diverse portfolio. So let me write this down. This is a, this is a crucial assumption of the capital asset pricing model and you should be aware of it. So if, and this is a, you know, this is an assumption, diversification is easily attainable, achievable. I know that in reality, it's not always the case, but you know, under the capital asset pricing model, that's a critical assumption. It's easy to diversify your portfolio. Therefore, it's easy to get rid of unsystematic risk. And if that's the case, investors should not expect to be compensated or rewarded for taking on unsystematic risk or firm-specific risk. Just because you've got a lot of firm-specific risk in your holdings, well, that's your problem because you haven't diversified it away. 
So, you know, why be expect why expect to be compensated or rewarded for it? We should only so investors should expect to be rewarded for the amount of market risk for level of market risk or systematic risk to which they are exposed. And this is what the capital asset pricing model um, is all about. It's saying that don't expect to be rewarded for the most volatile stocks because some of that stock volatility may come from firm specific factors. But B, exp you know, expect to be rewarded for the level of market risk which a specific stock or more actually more universally, your portfolio of stocks exposes you to. And you could think, well, isn't market risk therefore the same for all portfolios, seeing as it's something we can't diversify away? That's not the case. Certain stocks expose you to more market risks risk than others. It depends on whether your stock or the companies you are holding in your portfolio are more cyclical, i.e. going up and down together with the market, or more defensive, meaning they react to market conditions but in a more subtle way. And one way to measure the sensitivity of a company's shares or share returns to overall market factors, meaning a way to measure the sensitivity and the exposure to systematic risk and market conditions is something called beta. So the capital asset model, a capital asset pricing model, relies heavily on a factor called beta to measure our exposure to market risk. And that beta is going to be a big driver of the expected return under the capital asset pricing model.